Forty years ago, a joyful outing at the Hamburg Cathedral Fair turned into an unforgettable disaster. And it wasn't just a split second away from reality. It was a complete loss of seven lives, and many others were left with physical and emotional scars. How did it happen? Could it have been prevented? And what impact did it have on the people involved? This is the tale of the unforgettable Hamburg Skylab Carousel tragedy. The atmosphere of the Hamburg Fair in 1981 was almost tangible. A hot summer day, laughter permeating the air, and the thrilling hum of the Skylab. It was a day of merriment, until it wasn't. Hamburg Cathedral, popularly known as Dom, has been a source of fun and entertainment for people since the 14th century. The famous fair, filled with funfair rides, sweet treats, and endless festivities, attracts millions of visitors each year. Among the numerous attractions, two rides stood out, Skylab and Catapult. Skylab, the center of our tale, was a grand spectacle. Towering over the fair, it was an alluring beacon of adrenaline. Its giant wheel of seats would spin, lifting the riders higher and higher, offering a bird's eye view of the bustling fair below. But as we've sadly learned, every spectacle holds a risk. The catapult, meanwhile, was a roller coaster like ride that shot its cars into the air with great force. Both rides were run by Norbert Witte, a charismatic showman known for his flamboyant outfits and jovial personality. On this fateful night of August 15th, the adjacent catapult ride was undergoing repair work, hidden behind a veil of darkness. The usually imposing roller coaster like ride had been grappling with a faulty looping mechanism since the evening. In response, Witte and a dedicated employee were deep into the night replacing a defective gear part. At 26 years old, Witty was a well-known figure in the world of amusement park rides, with many even referring to him as the King of Showmen. He was a dedicated showman, known for his magnetic personality and his dedication to providing thrilling experiences to the eager crowd. But that night, an unfortunate series of events was about to unfold. Witta had made a fatal assumption. As earlier stated, Vita's catapult, known for its breathtaking acceleration, was experiencing technical issues with its gearbox. A heavy engine part needed to be replaced, and the repair was in progress just as the final ride of the Skylab was about to begin. Witte, oblivious to the overlap in operations, had lifted the heavy engine part with a truck-mounted crane and left the crane jib extended into the path of the Skylab gondolas. At approximately 12.55 a.m., operator Hilda T. initiated the final ride of the Skylab. With a lurch, the Skylab started its ascension. Its rhythm echoed the rising anticipation of the riders. The Bee Gees' Massachusetts blared in the background, its melancholic notes striking an eerily fitting accompaniment to the unfolding disaster. It was as if the universe conspired to score this tragedy with the most inappropriate music. This tragic symphony imprinted itself into the minds of onlookers, embedding the chilling incident deeper into the collective memory. The enormous wheel, fitted with gondolas, rose to an incline of around 80 degrees, and as the carousel increased its speed, the gondolas started to lift, carrying their passengers higher and higher into the air. The machine, designed to make riders feel as though they were defying gravity, now held 28 unsuspecting thrill-seekers. The Skylab carousel, designed to accommodate double this number, had a considerable amount of empty seats, perhaps lending a false sense of security to those aboard. The catastrophe unfolded swiftly and brutally. As the first gondolas ascended, they collided with the crane jib which was hanging ominously in their path. The sheer force of the impact slashed through the gondolas, ripping them open like tin cans. As the gondolas shattered, shards of glass and metal were flung into the surrounding area, hitting passers-by. The force of the collision was so powerful that it tore the protective grills from the gondolas, ejecting the passengers into the air. Some plummeted 50 feet onto the unforgiving concrete below. In the midst of the chaos, two men managed to jump off the carousel in the nick of time saving themselves from the disaster. Hilda T., recognizing the unfolding catastrophe, desperately hit the emergency stop button, but it was tragically too late. For a moment, a chilling silence descended upon the scene, soon to be replaced by horrified screams and cries of pain from the injured and traumatized. Vincenzo Maniscalco, a print shop employee who was just there to pick up his wife from her job at the cathedral bakery, was one of the passengers aboard the ill-fated ride. As the carousel began its deadly ascent, Maniscalco, noticing that the ride was running late, checked his watch. 
As the ride spun faster and the gondolas lifted higher, he noticed the crane's jib too late. He later recalled the terrifying moment when the floor panel of his gondola was ripped away, likening the sensation to that of a bomb explosion. He was able to hold on and pull his legs close to his body, narrowly avoiding severe injury. The bloody aftermath of the tragedy was an appalling sight. Seven people were killed, and many more injured, some severely. The catastrophe not only left physical wounds, but also deeply scarred the survivors and the entire community. The shock of the incident was so great that even Vita, the operator of both rides, collapsed and was promptly rushed to the hospital, leaving behind a fairground turned into a scene of chaos and despair. While some later speculated whether Vita was dramatizing his role as a victim, the devastating scope of the tragedy suggests otherwise. The subsequent court proceedings found Witty guilty of negligent homicide and negligent bodily harm, despite his refusal to accept responsibility for the catastrophe. His reputation in the amusement park industry was destroyed, his standing as the king of showmen lost, and his life would never be the same. However, despite the scale of the tragedy, Vita's sentence was relatively mild, one year probation, sparking further controversy and leading to a deeper examination of safety standards and practices within the amusement park industry. The tragic accident involving the Skylab carousel that occurred at the Hamburg Cathedral Fair sent a shockwave across Germany and resonated globally. The subsequent legal proceedings determined that Vita's oversight had triggered the catastrophic sequence of events, leading to the catastrophic failure of the Skylab's structural arm. This grave negligence was not just an operational oversight, it translated into a horrific loss of life that marked a grim day in the annals of amusement park history. However, the repercussions of the incident didn't cease with Vitti's conviction or the conclusion of the court proceedings. Vitti's journey took an unexpected turn following the fulfillment of his legal sentence. Faced with the haunting aftermath of the accident and the weight of the lives lost under his watch, he resolved to channel his guilt and regret into something positive. Consequently, Vitti dedicated the rest of his life to championing the cause of safety regulations in amusement parks hoping to prevent the repetition of such devastating accidents. Armed with the bitter experience and intimate understanding of the catastrophic consequences of overlooking safety measures, Witte embarked on a mission to transform the amusement park industry's safety standards. His campaign was not merely a professional endeavor, but a personal commitment to making amends. He became a vocal advocate for rigorous safety checks and maintenance protocols, emphasizing that negligence was not an option when people's lives were at stake. Parallel to Vitti's transformation, another compelling narrative was taking shape in the form of Vincenzo's life journey. After surviving the calamitous event, he was embroiled in an emotional battle. The terrifying memories of that horrifying evening were etched deeply in his mind, serving as a stark reminder of the friends he had tragically lost. However, as with Vitti, the tragedy also marked the beginning of a new path for Vincenzo. He wrestled with his grief and emotional trauma, and sought to transmute them into a force for good. Amidst his struggle, Vincenzo discovered a new purpose, advocacy for stricter safety regulations in amusement parks. Harnessing his traumatic experience as a potent catalyst for change, he aligned himself with Witta's mission. Together, Witty and Vincenzo embarked on a crusade to improve safety standards within the amusement park industry. Their shared experience of the Skylab carousel tragedy became a driving force behind their relentless pursuit of safer amusement parks. It was an unexpected alliance, born out of shared tragedy, with a singular goal, to ensure that no one else had to experience the kind of devastating loss they had known. They strove to turn their shared tragedy into a beacon of hope and a catalyst for industry-wide change. The Skylab Carousel tragedy is a stark reminder of the importance of stringent safety measures and regular maintenance in amusement parks. The lives lost, and the impact it had on survivors like Vincenzo Maniscalco underline the enormous responsibility borne by those operating these attractions. The incident left a deep scar in the heart of Hamburg and the amusement park industry worldwide. But out of that tragedy came change, awareness, and a commitment to ensuring the safety of all who seek joy and thrill at amusement parks.